Hi, I'm Dave Henry, Senior Vice President of Enterprise Solutions at Pentaho. What I'd like to talk with you about today is the big data analytics workflow. And this is just a process-oriented view of the common things that, that need to be done when we want to execute an end-to-end -end workflow all the way from acquiring data sources to producing information for users. The first thing I want to point out is uh, what we call generation. And this is really the responsibility of the, uh, the end user, the developer, uh, whoever owns the application. They're going to uh, create data files, and those data files may be stored in, in lots of different formats, anything from XML to log file data to maybe things even like uh, Avro documents. And once an application has generated that data, it needs to be transmitted. So we talk about transmission as a way of getting data from lots of disparate uh, remote locations uh, or remote applications and getting that data staged in an area so we can begin to get it into an environment. Now this uh, talk assumes that we're working with something like uh, the Hadoop system. In a Hadoop system, once you have uh, a feed of data, maybe you're using something like uh, Flume, which comes with uh, Apache Hadoop, you can uh, automate the process of getting that data from a staging area into your Hadoop cluster. And we call that process ingestion. And after the, uh, the ingestion phase, which involves um, reliably inserting that data into the cluster, we're ready to perform some, some more uh, uh, transformation type activities on the data. So once the data has arrived in the Hadoop cluster, that's kind of when the heavy uh, lifting begins so we can get the data ready for analysis. So we have a phase called cleansing and enrichment. And what we mean by that is, is the whole process of taking raw data, which is usually unstructured or semi-structured, and parsing that data, putting it into individual fields, and then correcting some of the inconsistencies that we find. So dealing with data quality problems in the data, for example. Or equally important, adding what we would call reference data. Now reference data is all the information about your raw data that helps, it, it helps you make sense of that. So for example, having the ability to take a reference to uh, some kind of user ID and tying that to a, a user profile database to bring in information about the user so we might be able to do customer uh, analytics and get better insight into behavior. So this cleansing and enrichment phase uh, is generally where we spend the most amount of time from a, a development point of view when we're developing these applications. Once we've gone through and enriched the data and cleansed it, we move on to aggregation. And we're dealing with large volumes of data in the area of uh, hundreds of millions or billions of records per day. Uh, it's important for business intelligence that we aggregate it. And here's where something like the Hadoop system becomes incredibly powerful because of the MapReduce framework and the ability to take information and summarize it. And we typically summarize that information along some, some axes like, uh, like time. So for example, we'll take a series of records and we'll roll those up to some time period, maybe a month or week or a day of the week or even hour of the day. So the aggregation piece is a, is a critical part of this flow. And then we have a phase called optimization. And uh, the current status of, of uh, uh, state of the art, if you would, within Hadoop is to take this information and prepare it for analytics. Get it to the point where users who are using a business intelligence system can get fast execution and response time from the system that they're querying. So optimization can mean several different things. For many customers, it means taking this aggregated information and putting it into an analytical database. And an analytical database is optimized for high performance uh, queries and, and giving good response time to end users. And once we've gone through all these phases, then we're ready for consumption. And uh, Pentaho has a, a business uh, uh, analysis uh, suite, or uh, Pentaho business analysis uh, server, which will allow us to uh, give direct access from users to this optimized data through things like reports, dashboards, analysis views, and doing that all over, um, through, over the web, doing that through a mobile device, for example. Now, Pentaho can help you with many of these different areas, and I'm just going to highlight them very quickly. So on the transmission and ingestion side, Pentaho Data Integration has the ability to use, uh, like I mentioned, uh, interfaces like Flume or Scoop or um, perhaps even the Pentaho native connections that we have to the Hadoop file system. So we can read and write to the Hadoop file system. 
We can also copy files directly into the Hadoop file system. The cleansing and enrichment is where Pentaho MapReduce comes into play. So Pentaho MapReduce uses Pentaho data integration, but takes the transformations that are available at a component level within PDI and executes them as uh, MapReduce uh, transformations or logic. So you have the ability to use all of those components that are on the Pentaho data integration palette to build your logic. We also have the ability to execute reducers within uh, the Hadoop environment, and you can use that same set of components of transformations to uh, help you uh, perform aggregation in the reducer phase. Pentaho supports a number of the, po the popular analytical databases that uh, are on the market, so things like uh, Vertica, uh, Greenplum, uh, Vectorwise, for example. And through high-performance bulk loaders, we're able to take this aggregated data and move it into a uh, place to stage it very quickly where it can be accessed by the user. One final thing I'll mention is that uh, this phase here, this optimization phase, is, is quickly evolving. What I mean by that is this whole process of extracting information from Hadoop after it's aggregated and moving it into a data warehouse will become more or less optional within uh, the next six months. So a number of our partners are working on techniques to allow high performance direct access between the Pentaho business analytics server and Hadoop itself. And so you'll see projects such as Impala, for example, from Cloudera, allowing our end users to connect the business intelligence uh, components directly to Hadoop and to access this information directly. So as we go forward, we'll see this uh, process be even further streamlined.